Okay, this is going to be the last video in the uh, MAPC blending. So, um, if you haven't watched videos uh, one through five, I suggest you stop now and pick back up through one through five so that you can keep up with where we're at. Um, or else, it, depending on where you're at with servos, it may or may not be helpful. So, um, what I'd like to show now, um, but to save some time, what I've done is added a couple of extra things is um i've changed the look of the way the mapc blending is done um you used to see it where it was like this on the last video it was like this um basically i shortened it up just for the simple fact of it was it's easier to see um and it just it flows better so um, I did that and I also added in a state above that to um, home the first um, virtual axis and also to reposition the axis one based upon the home position or the based upon the actual position of the virtual then transition to state four which in that point if we uh, started the blending um, then what we do is we start the first cam it would initiate unlatch the second cam usage come down and then as soon as the um, second cam fired it would go into a pending status which would be waiting it would wait until the cam is done of the first position cam the first motion axis position cam and then it would assume and start taking the motion or control of the motion as soon as that cam finished. Now, as soon as it finished, it would go into an, a PC. The, the process complete bit would happen. It would then uh, push a four back into the state control, which would go right back into um, repeating the process. So um, to show you a different style blending, what I've done is I've changed the cam somewhat as so I've made it come up, come down, and then come back up so that you can see a lot easier or a lot different transition. I've also made this one come down and then come back up and then come back down so that you can see that. Now I've, what I've done is I've also changed the trend so that in the trend you get to see a representation of um, let, let's change this to uh, I want to show like a negative 5 to maybe like a 120 um, this will show you a better representation of what the cam is actually doing so that would actually show you now what we'll do to start this and keep in mind the virtual axis is off at this point in time we are running our virtual axis at three. That's based upon our dynamics of our um, our uh, virtual axis. So again, that that's why we're running it that low, um, and our di also our di dynamics of our um, axis one. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and run it, and I'll I'll explain it while as as it runs. So first and foremost, we're in state three, right? Now, I'll tell you what, let's take it back. Let's, um, let's take this all the way back and make sure that our first scan works, right? So right now we're in state three. Let's go into our um, program mode, go back to run mode. Now you can see, let's see, <clears throat> actually... Let's go to program mode and run mode. So it should clear this out. Maybe the first scan is actually uh, not scanning on that. If I downloaded it, let's do that. Let's actually save. Let's save where we're at right now and download so that you can the, the real process to see this is a download and the reason is because the first scan is obviously the first scan of the processor um, 
and by taking it to program to remote or, or from program remote run to program it should pick up that first scan bit um, sometimes you have to throw a first what they call first scan hold in there is what I like to do um, sometimes you win with that sometimes you don't so <clears throat> again that that did not oh okay I know why that didn't happen because I'm forcing a three down here so um, what we should do <laughs> in that token um, is only say <clears throat> I should I should say that um, I should take this force three out for now but um, and let's do that because the state machine is not exactly healthy uh, at this point with what I just did adding that in there so let's do that and then now let's show you the first scan okay so now we're at a two the first scan should actually happen on this transition and it does okay so that showed me that it was actually what I was doing down here with the right three in there um, and that's fine um, but I need to make sure my my systems healthy first so what I'm gonna do is cut the servo on and as long as the servo is on, then I'll I'll go ahead and allow this to happen. So let's de delete that, and that's something that uh, you know I can fix another time. But the point of this video in the video segment is not state machine. The video segment is basically about the the um, blending. So now we're in state three, and our um, virtual axis is off, right? We know our virtual axis is off because basically our average velocity is below one, right? So now if we hit the home button, we should actually home. We home the virtual axis first. We then reposition the uh, position of the axis one in, off the um, actual position of the virtual axis. Now we could have just did two homes. But I wanted to show you two different ways to do it. Okay, so with that said, we're going to leave our home on up here because I'll force it back into a three if I don't have it on right here. And what we'll do is we'll start our blending. Now, before we do that, actually, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's start our blending. Now, it's not going to transition until our virtual axis is running. It's not going to do anything at that point. So let's start our our um our trend so our trend plainly shows that our we're having a rollover right now that's that's what this is the zero to one our zero to three three sixty so that's that's all that's the only reason you see that okay so now at this point if we start our uh virtual jog which is our our master of our our mapcs the um cam is actually firing at this point so we'll let you we'll let this go through and I'll show you a, you know the cam profile and how it transitions from one to another and you don't see any kind of break in motion whatsoever this is the the sole reason behind this is this is cam blending this means you can transition from one bit to another or one one um, instruction to another and have seamless transition without having to stop the servo whatsoever now how did we accomplish this right and that's with that that pending um, you're, you're throwing one cam status in pending and waiting for the other cam status to finish as soon as it does it picks up now obviously we're jumping from state to state so we have to have some means of our we have to have some means of control in there <clears throat> and that's what that is this this means of control so you can plainly see this is the first cam it goes up and goes down now it's starting to take over on the second cam now this second cam runs all the way down and then it has that little loop back up right here and then it goes all the way down to zero and I'll show you that um, in the uh, camming profile so in this scenario 
we have that first cam. It goes up, comes back down, and comes back. And then it's it stops, right? But the second cam then takes over, picks it back up where it left off, and then goes and does the rest of it. Now, again, how did that happen? Because we have the first position cam set to immediately happen. Okay, so it's going to happen once. It's only going to happen once, right? It's not persistent or it's not any other. It's happening once. And it's happened immediately. Okay, so when we, we go to the, and we're immediately going to um, transition our states to five. So if, obviously, if it's running, then we're cutting our, our second cam on. And it's going to be, it's going to actuate into a pending status, which is going to throw the um, pending status bit of axis one on. Now, as soon as it's pending again, right? This is like right now it's pending. It's, it's, it's in function, but it's pending. Okay, so the IP will be high while it's pending. But to show that the, the cam is active is this second cam bit. Now you can either, um, like in, in a Rockwell representation, when they do the time cam, they show, and I think I've shown in the past too, that you can count from one to two, three, four, and keep track of it like that. In this scenario, I'm showing you just using a, a latch and unlatch bit to let you know where you're at. If I take this bit out, this uh, camera here will continuously run, even though it's set to once. And that's because of the way the processor scans. So you have to have a form of, you know, understanding where you're at, and that's with these time or this this second cam active. You can call it whatever you want to call it, and you don't even have to have a bit. You can have a counter if you want, and you can have some kind of form of of that. But you have to under you you have to have a way to segment the two. Um, <clears throat> now let's get into the talk of actually. Uh, so let's stop and stop the cam. So we'll stop the cam where it is, right? We'll let it finish out because obviously it's still got to finish out. It still has one pending. So the, and, and that will show over here, right? Still going to, um, and you see where I, now if I stopped it in the middle of a cam, obviously that's going to happen. But um, the other cam's still going to finish. So when the other cam finished, what we need to do is we need to come over here and stop the virtual. Um, and, and again, this isn't a perfect scenario. This is just a scenario where I told, you know, this is a blending scenario. This is all this is. So I wanted to kind of show you how to blend a cam. Now, what if we scaled the uh, cam a little bit, right? If we scaled the second cam, <coughs> or the first cam, and we scaled the master, or we scaled the slave, then we could affect the way the cam is working. Like if I went to this and said 1.25, um, then this would affect the way the cam profile looks. And I'll actually show you that. So let's cut this off. It's going to go back into 3. Let's home it again. Okay, so now everything is back in sequence. Let's start it, and this may be too a little too fast for um, the servo that I'm using because uh, I'm running it off 110, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so this is um, you see this this change has rapidly changed the the way the the servo actually worked, um, and it also faulted the servo out. So again, that, I knew that was probably going to happen um, based upon me running a 110 if I throw too much velocity on it um, that will happen so let's let's try not to do that on the first one I just wanted to show you that it will change by doing the scaling not the best way to do things but you can influence it that way uh, let's try to do the second one on that because the second one is not so aggressive It's not so aggressive, so maybe we can get by with that on that one and not have it trip out. Okay, so this one, obviously we're in a state of zero right now. So we need to go through. 
and start the system. Everything is good. Okay, so now we went and homed. Let's see. Did we home? Um, yeah, the virtual. That's why we need to stop the virtual. Okay, so let's actually home the virtual, home, home everything. We'll keep that on. We'll start our blending. And then we'll cut this on. Okay, so we see how the the axis is working. And we'll see how the second cam actually responds now. Might be a little bit, again, I'm using the servo off 110, so it might be a little too much for it, but we'll see. Because the voltage drop happens quite a bit. Okay, so that was that. This was that that scaling at a different rate, which was 1.25. Again, so that that showed a little bit of difference, you know, as far as how it reacts. And it with you scaling it different, it will change the uh, numbers that it uses, so it won't necessarily be in line again. Um, so just keep that in mind too when you're playing with scaling. So let's. Uh, Let's stop the blending. <clears throat> we'll stop. We'll wait till it 100% stops. So just make sure that if you're using the blended method, if you scale, you need to scale both. Um, in this, in say, in in the situation that I'm using right now, I'm using a one a servo that's 480, and I'm I'm using it with 110. So I'm using, I'm having to dial everything back a good bit. So I'm not exactly having, uh, have the ability or flexibility to um, have that rapid or really hard Excel. So um, <clears throat> it's not a big deal. I just, you know, wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, everybody knew why I wasn't able to do that. So um, with this said, again, there's the blending method. And I, what I want to do is put this back to uh, one, because again, if you change the the slave counts or the master counts, whatever you change, you do change the 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 numbers that it goes in here. So it's basically a multiplier, right? So you use that as like a multiplier, but not to get you too confused on that. What I want to I'm not confused, but just not throwing in different elements at one point in time. What I wanted to kind of illustrate is the fact of the cam itself, how to blend the two together without having a single stop. Um, you know, that's something that uh, I can go a little bit more in depth on if needed to. But again, um, just building this, you know, videos one through six now, um, you know, should give you a really, really good solid foundation if you ever see this done on how to do it. The other, um, you know, if you followed the course and everything, the other uh, videos that I did for the blending of the time cam was exactly the same, except that was a time-based scenario. So understanding position and timing and everything, and timing is relevant with, with servos and everything. So um, the difference is this is more of a position base, and time is still an, uh, you know, a, a, a very valuable uh, part of the equation. But um, understanding that, uh, with that said, let's see, let's go in here and cut this back on. With that said, the, the timing and, and everything is still important and position is still important. It just, you need to understand which one you're using. This is more of a, a position based system than it is timing. Okay, so let's actually cut this on and you'll see the servo. Just go right back to where it was using the same function and you see all I'm showing here is the uh, actual position and the velocity uh, um, not the velocity but actual position and cam uh, command position and you see that they do kind of get off on one another and that's again when it goes into that rapid Excel that's that curve that um, it, with a using a 4 servo with a 110 power supply um, is basically that's that lag you're seeing right there. It should actually look like this, but 
the XL is so rapid, it's actually falling behind because the voltage dropped. So um, that should explain that. But this still shows the first cam and the second cam actually happening um, in the same. And you can actually see the fall behind right here. Um, but either way, um, the, the purpose of this video and the purpose of this little video series is to show you the positioning, um, how to do a position cam and how to make it blend together with no, um, no stopping or nothing. You know, this is basically a system that will sit here and keep running and not have any kind of interruptions. And not to say you can't stop it because all I have to do to stop it is to come right here and it will stop as soon as it's done. Right, because right now I'm not having it continue anymore. It will it will actually stop where it's at and not move any further. So it'll go all the way down. It will finish where it's at. As soon as it's finished it'll go into and have the position complete the, the uh, process complete bit not the position complete the process complete bit and come in here and, and throw it waiting on for it to start again okay so if if right now I started it again it will start right back up so just like it just did so if I wanted it to run one cycle all I have to do is cut this off so as soon as I cut this off, it's going to run one cycle, right? But, and I'll show you that. It's going to actually go in and run this one cycle and then stop. But if I wanted to continuously run, all I got to do is keep that bit on. So again, this is not a seamless um, process, but within something that we just threw together with, in you know, a matter of an hour of videos with six videos, I think it is very valuable to show how to mesh two cams together and not have them stop and that's actually cam blending so uh, hopefully that added a lot of value to um, you know everybody's understanding and um, and again thank you for your support and being part of everything that we've done here so um, again depending on what platform you've seen this um, you know this is meant to be part of the training so Again, um, I may release this or wherever, but I just want to actually, you know, show that um, this this is something that is very valuable. And some key elements too is, you know, making sure that your um, your virtual axis is running. You know, when you're doing blending, um, camming, and, and stuff like that. If you're more curious about camming, um, if you're you haven't been part of um, my motion course, um, I would suggest getting that and that would show you more about this type of stuff. But if, if, um, for those that do watch this on the motion course, um, you're very familiar with this. So, um, you know, I shouldn't have to, to go through this anymore. But again, um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out and, um, hope everybody's having, uh, you know, a good, good weekend. And, uh, uh, again, thank you for your support.